You turn in your Bible to Psalm 31. I'm going to talk today about what God thinks of liars. Psalm 31. There's a lot of different groups that God has mercy on, but uh, I'll tell you what, liars, they're not one that God has too much uh, grace for. Psalm 31, verse 17 through 19. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon Thee. Watch out for people to tell you not to call upon the name of the Lord. Let the wicked be ashamed, and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. O oh, how great is Thy goodness, which Thou hast laid up for them that fear Thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. There's a lot of people out there that don't like righteous preachers. I've gotten to experience that quite a bit in my life, in my years of being in ministry, full-time ministry. And uh, it's, of course, reached a fever pitch now. I mean, it's, it's uh, just an epidemic of people that hate me and hate this ministry and are trying to silence my voice online. And I'll be saying more about this as we continue, but... The fact of the matter is, there are people that are liars, and they'll say all kinds of manner of horrible, terrible things about you that are not even true, and they won't stop doing it. They just keep on and keep on and keep on, but their destruction is coming. Job chapter 20, verse 4 through 5 says, Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short? and the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. Again, oh, they're getting away with things and whatever else, and the persecution that comes on this channel, um, on this ministry, I should say, King James Video Ministries, there's been a lot of persecution as of late, and for years and years and years, I've, you know, this ministry has been persecuted quite a bit and kicked around quite a bit, which I expected because I kicked the enemy very hard. Um, I have always sought to preach the Word of God without compromise. Uh, without being wishy-washy. I put up with it for years and years going to church buildings and sitting under Baptist preachers that were spineless. And I always said, okay, Lord, if you put me in full-time ministry, I'm going to do my very best. I'm going to make mistakes. I, I have always admitted to making my mistakes and things. I'm not perfect. But you know what? I try to come out and speak bluntly and plainly. And when the Lord shows me truth about something, I'm going to come out with it. It's just as simple as that. But the joy of these hypocrites, these, these people that just love to see anything bad happen to myself, you know, like I said, a lot of these people, they just, they want, I mean, they, they wish for bad things to happen to not only me, but to my wife and my son. It's, it's crazy. But their joy is just for a moment. The joy of that hypocrite is just for a little bit of time. Psalm 59. Turn next to there. Psalm 59, verse 12 through 13. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. And for cursing and lying which they speak, get back to that in a minute, consume them in wrath, consume them that they may not be, and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. Selah. You say, well, that's for the Jews back in the Old Testament. Yeah, well, guess what? I have a closer relationship to the Lord than David did. Why? David was not part of the body of Christ. He's not one flesh with God. Jesus Christ is God. I'm part of his body. All right? David didn't have that. He had some things there that were types of what we have today in the New Testament. But I'll tell you what. He didn't have the promises that we do today as Christians. We have even greater promises than these right here. So if God's judgment comes upon the people there in the Old Testament, how much more is it going to come upon the, on the people that live today? But look at this, verse 12. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. You know why these people continue to attack this ministry? continue to infiltrate and just continue to try to just sow seeds of division. They're writing all the time to people that are friends of, of, of mine, friends of the ministry here. 
these devils, these wicked, lying, prideful, lost people continually go after young Christians and things, trying to pull them away, trying to mess them up. You know why? Because it's pride. Somewhere, someplace, I preached against a sin that they're involved in and it gets them upset and then they're, they just turn just and they just flip right on me like that and now I'm the worst false prophet out there. I hurt their pride. That's the whole issue here. But check it out. And for cursing and lying which they speak. Isn't it ironic that these people literally defend cursing? I came out with a video months ago saying a Christian does not curse or swear. Something changes in you. You know, again, people look at me as a Christian today and they say, oh, he's always been that way. No, I wasn't. I was quite foul-mouthed. I was quite a pervert, sex pervert. I was quite lawless. I was quite rebellious. I was quite wicked. But something changed when I got saved. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God moved within to me, my body and changed things. And one of the things that changed is the thing of profanity, cursing. I used to watch movies. I used to laugh about movies and laugh at the profanity and everything else. Now it just, every time I hear profanity, it just, oh, it's like a knife going through me. I just, I hate the sound of profanity. I can't stand it. But lost people come out and they say, there's nothing wrong with swearing and being a Christian. And isn't it interesting that some of the cowards that attack this ministry use all kinds of profanity? And yet they're saved and a clean, leaving pre clean living preacher like myself is lost. I mean, it's gotten to that point where it's so sick in this world that you literally have lost people with foul mouths watching pornographic material online judging the salvation of Christians that live clean and preach against sin. You see, what's happening in these last days is you are literally having the Antichrist church rising and trying to usurp the true church of Jesus Christ. And saying, they're coming up and they're saying, we don't judge people while judging you as a Bible-believing Christian. We accept all versions. What's this King James Onlyism stuff all about? The Catholics aren't really that bad. I'm not going to judge a Catholic. I'm not going to this. I'm not going to that. And yet they'll point their finger at you and call you lost and, and cult member and all this other stuff. They're liars. You understand? And God hates them. God's got some bad times ahead for those wicked, prideful liars. Consume them in wrath. Verse 13. Consume them that they may not be and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob under the ends of the earth. Um, the nice little time of God just kind of letting things go and whatever. You know, God's always judged, don't get me wrong. But uh, we're going to start seeing more and more and more of God's judgment and wrath coming. Now I'll be talking in future studies about how we can actually help that process come about. And I do think that we should. I do think that we should want to see judgment come upon the wicked. You see, we get this, this, we get so influenced by the world that we start to think to ourselves, you know, you see somebody get killed in, in an earthquake or a natural disaster or whatever, and you go, oh, that's just terrible. That's what lost people say. Hey, do you think that they were innocent? Do you think anybody innocent dies? That's, you know, I'll say, you know, I think aborted babies are innocent, certainly. But I'm saying, older people, do you think that they're innocent? That God's up there going, oh, no, oh, man, I didn't see that coming. God has everything completely in control, brethren. Every single event, every single person out there, He knows their thoughts. He knows how many breaths they take in a minute. He knows all the numbers of the hairs on their head. He knows everything about everyone. And if anybody dies out there, if anybody has judgment come upon them, God knows about it. He knows. And as a great comfort to you as a Christian, as a great comfort to me, as I'm going through all this stuff, God knows. He knows who's telling the truth and who's lying. It's all being recorded. 
You know, when you think about the reality of hell and you think about a place where people go and they burn and they burn and they burn and they don't ever burn up, weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth forever. And you think, oh, it's just, I can't fathom it. They had the chance in this life. They had the chance to find the truth. And yet they seek after lies. They're earning their damnation. The wages of sin is death. They're working. They got a nine to five job or maybe a 24 to seven, you know, 24 seven job, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They got a job and they're earning their wages. They play pretend Christian for a little while, you know. I'll make some little videos on YouTube or some kind of little thing and whatever else and I'll play pretend. I'll go off to my little church building someplace and I'll play, I'll play pretend Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'll lie about true Bible-believing Christians. God's got their number. Don't worry about that. Psalm 120. I'm glad that I serve a God that is a judge. He's not a sissy. Psalm 120, verse 1 through 7. In my distress I cried unto the Lord, and He heard me. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. What shall be given unto thee, or what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? Sharp hours, arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. Woe is me that I sojourn in Meshach, or in Mesek, that I dwell in tents of Kedar. My soul hath long dwelt with him that hateth peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. <laughs> you know, I, I love the Word of God. It's just so amazing. I mean, this book, it's archaic. I don't think you can really understand it. Get saved and then you can. All right. Anybody that says that this book is just, I can't understand it, it's too archaic and whatever else, and I can't really apply it to my life today. I mean, there's so much in this book that you read it and you'll read it. You could read it something 50 times and come back and see something brand new. Why? Because the Lord's showing it to you. It's amazing. But, you know, I look at this thing and I say, you know, I am for peace. Hey, i got to shut the comments down on my YouTube channel, the big YouTube channel, you know, Husky394XP. I got to shut the comments down. Why? Too much strife. I don't want all the strife. I don't need all the strife. People can write to me. They write to me letters and they say, hey, I don't agree with you in this point or that point. Fine. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. But don't be coming in here and doing all the strife and everything. Okay, I got to shut the comments down. Okay, that's not working. Well, okay, I'll create a Patreon page. Oh, now they're going to come over to Patreon and start stealing videos and, you know, give them the enemies of this ministry. See, I am for peace. I don't want the strife to continue. I just want to teach the Word of God and preach the Word of God. But these people, these enemies, these liars, these prideful liars, they're for war. They always want to fight. And they just continue to come out with the same stuff over and over and over again. They come in and they, they get in and, oh, I'm your friend and I'm uh, everything else. And, and, and they'll lie to you and things and, and get in there. And, and all of a sudden, they just turn and just start stabbing you in the back. And, you know... I have a lot of it because I'm in full-time ministry. But every single one of you as a Christian out there is going to go through the same thing. You're going to get saved and you're going to have relatives, maybe even a husband or a wife. That's going to, you're thinking, wow, they're saved too. They're a Christian too. And next thing you know, as you're getting into the Word of God, they're not quite coming along for the ride, if you know what I mean. And they're starting to say things and think things, you know, whatever, and you're going, Whoa, okay, they're starting to act like a lost person. You're for peace, but they're for war. And they do it through lying. Proverbs 10, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 18. And this is a good one right here. To whoever you are that took stole videos that people are paying for here on Patreon. Been pushed into this thing here where I just can't keep putting stuff out there and think, I want to have a safe place where people can come and just, you know, okay, you don't agree with us. Go away, you know. But I want to have a safe place for Bible-believing 
friends of this ministry can come and discuss things back and forth. Or I'm not constantly having to delete and block and delete and block because people put in profanity in the comments. You know, again, the liars are famous for cursing as well. You know, imagine that. And I want to just have a place where people can come and enjoy each other's company and fellowship with each other. Oh, but we got to come in and sneak in there and start stealing content and posting it and things. But here's a good one. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 18. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Uh, you ought know, to look at some verses there where uh, God says certain things about fools. You know what's interesting? You know what the number one group is that God calls a fool? Atheists. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They're corrupt. They're abominable. How about that? You see, people that lie, that come in, look at look what they're doing there. Hideth hatred with lying lips. They're deceivers, you see. It isn't just, hey, you know, somebody walk up to me on the street and say, hey, Denlinger, you're an idiot. I can't stand you. You you say this, you say you're you, you know, you're doing this and this and that and stuff. I say that's not true, that's a lie. It's not even that. They're coming up and they're saying, Oh, Brother Brian, you're such a, uh, I've been so blessed by your ministry and oh, blah, 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 blah. And the whole time they hate my guts and they're just looking for some way for, you know, for me to turn so they can stab me in the back. The Bible says you're a fool if you do that. You're essentially an atheist. You see, if you truly believe in God and if you truly believe that every single thing that you do is going to be brought before God in judgment, uh, you're not going to do that. You're going to deal honestly. You're going to be man enough or woman enough or whatever. You're going to be have, have enough courage and enough character to come out and say who you are and not infiltrate. Oh, but see, they don't have any fear because they don't believe in God. I can tell you right now, all the investigation I've ever done, all the fighting enemies and things and false prophets, false teachers, whatever else, I have never once infiltrated any kind of group under a false name or under false pretenses or whatever else and pretended that I liked somebody so I get dirt on them. Never once. Why? Because I have the Holy Spirit of God on my side. He shows me the truth from His Word and He fights my battles for me. But whoever the coward is, that comes here to Patreon and comes in and sneaks in and steals videos and things. Or maybe it's one of you out there. And you say, well, I didn't ap appreciate what he said about John Kalau or something, so I sent it to him and things. You're a coward. You're a complete coward. And you go, well, we can, if, if he bans us, we'll come in some other way. And say, yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to be talking about this later on. But the, the future of this ministry is going to be uncensored some things coming out that are going to be completely uncensored, and I'll be releasing all the videos that YouTube kicked off over the years. All the stuff that YouTube is it's too controversial for the little goons at YouTube and Google. I'm going to be bringing it all out in the future, and I'm going to be coming out with things, Lord willing, by the help of God, that it's not going to have to be censored. See, in ministry... I've learned this thing over the years. Um, when you are going a certain way and you start to hit a kind of a brick wall or whatever there, and you're saying, okay, you know, the Lord will show you a new direction. And the Lord's been showing me new directions to take this ministry. Um, this ministry is not YouTube. Okay, the ministry is KingJamesVideoMinistries.com. King James Video Ministries that uh, used to make DVDs where I could say what I wanted. And I could put music on that I paid for royalty-free music, and nobody could put little ads on it or say, this is copyright violation or whatever else. It's not copyright violation. I have a legal right, and I've been fighting these stinking goons for years on this issue. I'm tired of the censorship. And if, Lord willing, I'm not going to say I'm going to do it in my own power and whatever else, but in the future, this ministry is going to be shifting and we're going to be bringing out very controversial information, stuff that I don't have to worry about censoring my speech because the video might get taken down or whatever else. I'm going to say what needs to be said without any worries about anybody taking anything down. 
and I back up what I have to say with documented proof. So I'm not going to be worried about people suing me for slander or libel or whatever else. And I know that that's what the devil fears. And I know that that's why the attacks have been so ferocious lately. So, we'll continue. John chapter 12, verse 15 through 22. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. Hmm. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Just like we read back there in, in Job, or like I read, I quoted Job chapter 20 verses 4 through 5. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Let me just stop there for just a minute. You know, people probably, you know, I know some, if you're a fan of the ministry here, if you're a friend of the ministry, you know that, you know, when I get worked up in things like this, I'm not, you know, oh, he's lost all of his joy. He's not smiling, you know. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's ridiculous. You understand why I'm speaking the way I'm speaking. Um, but, you know, to lost people out there that don't get it and whatever else, uh, you know, but, but to, to the counselors of peace is joy. Uh, one of the reasons I haven't been online a lot lately here, I think about two weeks since I put up a video, is because I've been busy having fun. Uh, we went to a tractor pool one day. We, we've gone to our property a bunch of times. You know, we've gone hiking. We've, you know, whatever. We, we've been having a lot of fun as a family. You know, we're enjoy enjoying ourselves. I have great peace and great joy in my life. Even in the midst of people just totally lying about me and stabbing me in the back and whatever else. I have joy. They don't. I don't need to go and just haunt their channel and things and pretend that I'm somebody that I'm not. <clears throat> Verse 21. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. You know, it's something amazing. A uh, brother here on Patreon uh, sent me a link to a whole big, almost three hours long about the Jesuits and how that they've poisoned people and killed people and whatever else. And, you know, it's it's amazing because we've attacked the Jesuits and I've literally had Jesuits right back and, you know, threaten me and whatever else. But the whole point is here, there shall no evil happen to the just. They haven't touched us yet. They don't dare come here and try to do any kind of physical threats or whatever else. Why? Because God protects us. Because God knows when He shows us truth here at this ministry, at King James Video Ministries, we will bring it out without any fear of, oh, what if somebody could say, I don't care. I fear God. I truly fear God. And that's why the wicked don't even attempt to come after us physically. I put my faith in Jesus Christ, you see. Verse 22, Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are His delight. You're an abomination to the Lord when you lie. People can point out problems that I've, you know, things where I've said things wrong or whatever else. You know, the, the big classic one is, you know, the thing of I said that uh, Jonestown, Jim Jones's little thing, whatever, was in Africa. I was thinking, uh, what is it, Ghana versus Guyana or whatever, made a mistake. And people hold that kind of thing against me. You know, I come out right after I got married and said my wife's never going to be in videos later. She's in videos. Well, but they don't play the part where I explain why she's in videos. You know, I say, Stephen Anderson's a novice. He hits his Bible and things. And then they show me hitting my Bible because of Greg Miller, what he was saying and things. But they don't play the whole video. See? They cut little parts out and things to make me look like a liar. Why? Because they're a liar. That's why. They're lying about me. Whatever. Their judgment's coming. John chapter 8. 
And you know, the reason I'm doing this study, brethren, is not because I'm trying to, I'm venting and I'm, I'm so hurt and whatever. I'm trying to say this to encourage you. You see, because if it's happening to me, it's going to happen to you. The Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples, hey, if, if the world hates me, it's going to hate you. Well, guess what? I'm experiencing that now. I'm experiencing the hatred that came upon Jesus Christ, that came upon the disciples. I'm experiencing that same kind of hatred. I'm not Jesus Christ, okay? I know that. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. And I'm getting this weird hatred. And, you know, I, I, it's, it's ironic because a lot of times Jesus, he's getting hated on and people are just attacking him and he marvels at their unbelief. You know? And some of the stuff that I see that, you know, attacks on me and, and things and on this ministry, and I'm, I'm, it, it just, it causes me to marvel. And I'm going, I'm thinking, are you serious? This really? This, <laughs> it's incredible. John chapter 8, verse 43. It's going to happen to you too. If you're saved, get ready for it if it hasn't happened already. John chapter 8, verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. And that's really the whole thing, brethren. And again, I'm going to be talking about this in future studies in the next couple of weeks and things. Um, the fact of the matter is, there's a big problem with online internet ministry. And that is the thing of casting pearls and, and holy things before dogs and pearls before swine. All right. Um, there's really no New Testament precedent for this thing. And it is an imperfect system. And this, this ministry being online has been an imperfect thing and whatever else. I'm not saying that, I, that everything I've ever done was it perfectly in line with Scripture and whatever else. I admit to my, my faults and mistakes and whatever. Okay, I understand that. And here's the whole thing. Where in the New Testament does it say that we should be preaching Bible doctrine to the lost world? I see people getting saved, preaching, the Gospels preached to them, and then they are brought into a home. They are brought away from the world and over here now, okay, now we'll teach you the doctrines. We'll teach you the Word of God. We'll teach you what, what the Bible has to say. Well, in the imperfect online world, I'm trying to teach the body of Christ out there, but all these wicked, lost liars come along and deceivers come along, and they come along and they try to learn too, and then they get offended because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They can't hear. Why do you not, you know, what do you say here? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. They can understand some things. But then all of a sudden something goes and they say, I don't get that. It doesn't make sense. That seems to be a contradiction, whatever, because they're lost, you know? And I see some of my enemies that, you know, people keep throwing this rational wiki thing at me. They're atheists. How can an atheist, I mean, it doesn't even make sense. It's not, you know, talk about rational, all right? If you're, a, if you're an atheist, Christianity in the Bible is irrational. Then why get into a debate over doctrine of, of the Bible? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. It's not rational. But you see, these people, they're God-haters. That's the whole point. And anybody that preach, preaches truth, a preacher of righteousness, they'll go after him. And I see my enemies, you know, spiritual enemies and things, and they're quoting an atheist article against me. Why? Because they're both atheists. They're both fools. That's why. They're both lost. They have no fear of God. Lying to them just comes as second nature because they are of their father, the devil. Again, I am saying these things not as a bragging or pat myself on the back. Oh, look at me, I'm being persecuted. That's not why I'm saying it, brethren. I'm saying it because it's going to happen to you too. If it hasn't already, you will be persecuted for the cause of Jesus Christ. There's no way around it. So you have to settle it in your mind and say, you know what? If the book says it, I'm going to stand by it no matter what it costs me. I don't care what people think about me. You see, that's really the whole issue here. If you become a man pleaser, you're going to fall out of the will of God. 
You just got to get it settled in your mind. Just get it concreted, just cement it up there into your mind and say, you know what? It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what people think. All that matters to me, what does God think? Am I right with God? Am I in fellowship with my Lord, my Savior, my God, the creator of the universe? I mean, can you imagine the awesomeness of getting there and standing in His presence? Voice like many waters, a voice like thunder, different places. It says two different things there. John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, leaning on His breast at the Last Supper, you know, had His head right here. And He gets up there and He sees Jesus Christ in eternity. And He's hit in the ground and can't even speak. Scared to death. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. It is going to be a frightening, awesome thing to actually see the God of heaven for the first time. But you're more worried about what people think about you than what he thinks. You see, my struggle isn't, oh, look what people are thinking or saying about me. Oh, no, what are they going to say? That's not my struggle with staying online and whatever else and doing videos online and whatever. That's not the struggle, all right? What people are saying about me, whatever. My struggle is, am I wasting my time putting out holy things and pearls, holy things before dogs, pearls before swine, like it says in Matthew chapter 7? Am I wasting my time teaching doctrine on a platform that lost people can come in and twist my words, sneak in and whatever, and pretend that they're friends of mine with their lying lips that conceal the true hatred that lies within them. And just look for the right opportunity to try and catch me in my words to try and bring this ministry down. Am I wasting my time with this? And I'll tell you, if it wasn't for my friends in the ministry, I would have said to the internet long ago. But I know that there's a lot of people that are blessed by this ministry, that pray for the ministry, that support the ministry, I'll stay on as a result of that. But finally, let's go to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, verse 11 through 15. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. What makes you think that the life that you live right now is going to change when you hit eternity? You see, you are sowing some things right now. You're either sowing to the flesh or sowing to the spirit. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you'll reap, reap life everlasting. You know, when I think about heaven, and I think about going there to worship Jesus Christ for all of eternity, I'm looking forward to it. When I think about heaven, and I think about getting there, and there's no more temptation to sin, there's no more immodestly dressed women, there's no more drunkenness, there's no more cursing and swearing, there's no more rock music, there's no more of any of that stuff. I'm looking forward to it. You see, God made me holy. His Spirit came upon me and made my life holy where it once was not. And my likes and my interests changed. And it's going to go into eternity. But the people that say, oh, come on, don't judge that. Oh, it's okay. I'll watch a little bit of that and I'll listen to a little bit of this and I'll drink a little bit of that and I'll... whatever. They're setting the course for their life, not just now, but into eternity. People in hell wouldn't enjoy heaven. Why? Because they didn't enjoy a relationship with Jesus Christ for their whole life. That's why I've always questioned deathbed confessions. Oh, I've lived in, you know, lived wickedly all my life. I knew a farmer down in West Virginia, just a wicked old foul mouthed, drunken bum, and it, he got saved on his deathbed. I don't believe it for one second. No way. Because he came and said, Oh, I want to go to heaven when I die. What do I need to do? 
He just lived his whole life living like a filthy slob. But here in the end, I'll just write, okay, I'm going to be got about a week to live, a couple days here maybe to live. Okay. I, I did my fun. I had my fun there. Now what do I got to do to go to, what is it called again? Heaven. Oh, yeah, heaven. Yeah, that place, yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You really want to get to a place where there's no more drinking, no more cussing, no more telling dirty jokes? You did it your whole life. You never repented of it for your whole life. But now you're going to die and you're going to go to this place and enjoy it. I don't think so. I don't think so. God saves sinners. Sinners that come to Him broken and say, I don't want that life anymore. I don't want this horrible life of just wickedness and, and sex perversion and the profanity and all the other stuff and the covetousness that never makes me happy. I don't want it anymore. I want something different. I want a new life. Oh yeah, well you can have it now, but uh, you know, you'll have a little bit of a new life now and things because you go to church. <laughs> but then in eternity, it's just you kind of, you know. Huh? No. What we experience right now as Christians, the fellowship of the Spirit that we have between brothers and sisters in Christ, the joy that comes from seeing prayers answered, the joy that comes from being able to witness to somebody and whatever else, the, just the, the, the Lord showing you things from Scripture, take that and put it forever out into eternity. No end. Did you ever get to talking to a brother or sister in Christ through Skype or through personal face-to-face -face type of things or whatever else? And you're talking to them. You say, well, probably should get going here. I, you know, I got to get to bed or you got to get... Oh, I was going to tell you. I forgot. I forgot to tell you this. You are not going to believe what I do. And you talk and you talk and you talk and you talk. And all of a sudden it's an hour, two hours past when you intended to stop the conversation and you just you just I can't wait to talk to you again how about that forever and not just the brothers and sisters that are alive today how would you like to talk to the great revival preachers the ones that were not masons back in the 1800s how would you like to have a conversation with the apostle paul he's not going to be in some kind of an exalted place where you you know you kind of go up and bow before him and whatever else, and he says, yes, I will speak to you now. <laughs> That's not going to be the way it is. He's one of the 12 apostles. Don't get me wrong. There's a special position there. Boy, you're, you're going to be able to talk to him. I'm going to be able to talk to him. Hey, Peter. Hey, John. There go. Yeah, boy, that, think about it sometimes. When the liars are coming after you and the people are hating you, think about eternity. Let's continue here. Verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Hmm. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Somebody in the millennial kingdom, in other words. Okay. But look at verse 15. For without are dogs... Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, Jesus said back in Matthew chapter 7. And sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. There's a lot of people out there that make lies about this ministry. There are a lot of people that make lies about your videos, your ministry. You say, where are they going to be for all of eternity, brother? Are they going to be sneaking into heaven, infiltrating? And, oh, brother, we got another one in here. So, no. The triumphing of the wicked is but for a moment. They're getting away with their little thing down here. They look like they're getting away with it. They're, they're sick, unhappy people. I've dealt with these people for many, many years. Even before I got online, I've, I've dealt with these people. They're very, very sick, mentally sick physically sick, they, they live a horrible life and they just constantly, they live to just be used of the devil to try and drag you down as a Christian. But brethren, you need to remember out into eternity, without, they're without. 
Ain't going to be any kind of infiltration. Ain't going to be any kind of fakes coming along. Ain't going to be anybody trying to cut up your words or cut up what you've done. You are there in heaven as a Christian, and what you have, you've earned it, and God gave it to you so nobody can question it. And we're going to be there. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. That's what you go into eternity with. What did you do for Jesus Christ? And I'll tell you, one of the big struggles is letting these devils try to sidetrack you. They will try to pull you off course. They'll try to knock you off that narrow path that you're walking as a Christian. The narrow path that so many other people are going the opposite direction. And these liars will come along and they'll just constantly be trying to grab you and trying to pull you off and whatever. You got to remember that we're not going to be spending eternity with them. They're going to the place where they want to go. See, that's the reality of it. I mean, I will tell you a little story here. I think I've told this in other, other uh, sermons and things. But I remember being a youth group in youth group at the church I was raised in, Calvary Monument Bible Church. And I remember being there and I had this t-shirt on. It had skulls on it and whatever else, and heavy metal, and I had long hair and things. You've seen some of the pictures of my testimony thing. And, and I remember sitting there and I'm, I'm cool, you know. A teenager that just knew everything, of course. And, uh, and I remember this guy was there, and I think he was saved. I think most people at the church I was raised in were not saved, but this guy, I believe, was a saved man. And, um, and he was talking about Satanism and witchcraft and the occult. And I was just kind of, you know, pretending I'm not listening to this guy. He's a loser and whatever, but I was listening. And I remember at one point in time, he said, heavy metal music is satanic. And he pointed right at me and the other heavy metal guys. And he said, and you are deceived. You're listening to the devil's music and it's going to destroy you. Got through to me. I didn't say, I'm going to follow that guy around and see what I can find out about that guy. See, I wasn't that wicked. It's a whole different level of wickedness when you have people that come along and they hear the truth and because of their pride, because of how evil they are, they literally will track the preacher down and try to find anything they can against them. I was a wicked sinner, certainly, certainly. But what he said convicted me. And I later got saved, and I later took all my heavy metal music and all that other stuff, got a haircut, you know, <laughs> took all my heavy metal music and I burned it. That's the difference here, brethren. You're going to run into people that are going to reject the gospel. And they're going to go their way, and you won't have to deal with them anymore. You know, getting a little bit of an argument, maybe you might get a little bit heated and whatever, and kind of a, whoa, that was really crazy or intense. But they'll go away. But you're going to find these people, the people that the Lord Jesus Christ dealt with, the people that are filthy, lying fools. God has a special place for them in eternity. Remember that. That's what's going to get you through those rough times when these people just continue to fight. So that's going to be it for this sermon. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I do thank You uh, for the persecution that has come upon this ministry. Your Word says that I'm to rejoice and leap for joy, for my reward is going to be great in heaven as a result. Um, there are people that can disagree, Lord, but there's, and that's fine, and I'm not always right, and sometimes the disagreements, they're right, and I have to change my position. And I've done that, Lord, but uh, there's these other people, Lord, that they just, they're liars. I know that there's some that have infiltrated even this private place here where believers can come together and enjoy one another's fellowship. Uh, they're even here. And Lord, I do pray for your wrath and your judgment to fall upon them and their homes. Uh, they seek to turn people away from the truth. They're liars, they're deceivers. And just as you were rough on the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes because of what they were doing, compassing land and sea to make one proselyte, to make them twofold more the child of hell. 
I pray, Lord, that you would also have your wrath, wrath and judgment to fall upon these wicked people that seek to lie about myself and about other faithful brethren out there that are trying to get the truth out. And uh, Lord, I do pray that you would encourage all of those saints out there that are taking the stands and are getting kicked around and that uh, you wouldn't tarry, Lord, uh, much longer. I know that you have it all planned out, but uh, I, I think you know what I'm saying, Lord. I just We're looking forward to being with you finally and being away from all this lying and deception down here on this planet, on this earth. And I just ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. So, I had to correct myself there. You know, Brother Jeremy Carter, he always says, gets on my case and says, you know, don't say planet because it's not a Bible word. <laughs> okay. I think earth is, you know. So, world, there. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, just to kind of uh, say what's going on with the ministry um, right now, uh, the list is over there. I forgot to get it. But I um, have gone through and I'm basically cataloging every video I've done on YouTube both on this secondary channel and on the main Husky 394 XP channel. Um, I'm cataloging everything and I'm making sure that I have it all backed up on my external hard drive. Um, and if you haven't heard already, uh, the main channel on YouTube, I have two copyright violations, community strikes or whatever, kind of foolish nonsense. And uh, they've disabled my account over there from uploading new videos. So fine, that account's going to stay just dormant for a while. Um, honestly, at this point in time, if they delete it, eh, whatever. I really don't care. Um, I got everything all backed up, so it's not a problem. Um, but I'm cataloging everything, and it's eventually going to be put... Again, I have it over there. I didn't think to get it and bring it over here. But I'm going to be putting everything onto an external hard drive. Uh, we will be going back to DVD production at some point in time. Um, major studies and things are going to be coming out um, offline. Uh, I'm just, the, the, the problem with the internet, to say it this way, any video player, they're going to have to have some kind of rules about copyright stuff and whatever else, which I totally understand. I totally get that. You can't just say there should be nothing copyright wise on YouTube or whatever. I understand, but there's so much deception, so much lying among people that to govern that is very, very difficult. That's why if I come out with you know, this is one of my DVDs right here, the real Bible version issue exposed. This thing, um, I had every legal right. I did nothing illegal in this. Nobody could take me to court and sue me for any part of this. All the music is royalty free. I paid a lot of money for the music. It's all professional music, all the graphics in here, the animation, everything. I paid for it all. Um, all the artwork is my creation. I did the whole thing. Completely. So nobody can come along and say, oh, you violated copyrights and whatever else and things. And um, this is going to be the future of this ministry. I'm just going to say that right now. This will be the future. And I know brethren in other countries are going to say, oh, man, well, how are we going to get it? Um, we'll work something out there or whatever. But I'm going to be keeping my videos offline uh, in the future. Documentary type of stuff. Um, I'm not sure what, what I'm going to be doing with YouTube at this point in time. Maybe just preaching videos. Maybe just evangelism type of stuff. Preaching the gospel to the lost. But I think it's been a, a mistake to really talk a lot of doctrine type of stuff that lost people just aren't going to understand. They aren't going to get it. Um, so we're praying about what to do at this point in time. But it's a this cataloging project is huge. Um, I've been working for days and days and days on it. I had to take a break for a little while. Uh, just because I got other work to do outside and whatever else, but um, I'm up to about 400 videos now that I've cataloged, and uh, what I'm doing is making sure that I have, you know, uh, numbering them and things in for the cataloging project here, and then actually going in and making sure that the files are not corrupted. I just skip through it. I don't watch the whole thing, but I just skip through it, make sure that I'm putting it into a separate folder where it's cataloged and everything else, and then taking those folders putting them onto a brand new external hard drive, making sure I still have a copy on another external hard drive. It's I'm backing everything up, making you know, multiple copies and, and whatever. And then in the future, um, we're going to be getting a tax number and everything else. You know, Lord willing, again, not sure how everything's going to work yet or when this is all going to happen, but we'll be back to doing offline DVDs. 
Um, the reason being, like I said, I don't care if it's YouTube, Vimeo, um, Steam it, or there's a whole bunch of other ones out there, these video hosting sites. They all have copyright issues. They all have things and ads and whatever, and, and some that don't have ads are still going to, you know, it's just, it's complicated, and I really don't feel like messing with that stuff anymore in the future. So um, there will be definite, definite uh, documentary type of stuff coming out. Um, eventually, we'd like to get into writing books. My wife is actually looking into that right now. Um, you know, so uh, there's there's that's a whole other thing that's coming in the future, and uh, it's going to be a brand new direction for the ministry. And um, all of the controversial videos that I've ever put on YouTube that were taken down. Um, I mean, I just recently saw on this channel, I did a video about you know debunking Stephen Anderson's Holocaust denial. Um, I did a whole video on it, defending the nation of Israel, defending the Jewish people, and it got flagged for being offensive. And I'm thinking, how is it offensive? I'm going against the Holocaust deniers. Is that offensive? But, you know, it, it, see, that's, that's the problem with this online stuff because they're constantly people flagging things and whatever else and whatever. Hey, in the future, if you think my videos are going to be controversial, then don't buy them, all right? It's just going to be that simple. And of course, you know, I'm going to allow copying and giving them out to people, but there will be no online videos in the future. Okay, as far as these are concerned, documentary type of stuff in the future. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing. That's the direction that this ministry is going to be heading. Um, again, uh, nobody can say, well, you know, oh, he's changed his tactics or something. Uh, no, that's what I did originally. Originally, I was not doing YouTube. Uh, originally, I was putting out information on DVD. You just saw one of them there. I had a couple others as well. And that's the direction we're going to be going back to. Um, mostly because of the censorship thing. Again, people take my copyrighted work or they, t they cut up things or whatever else. Um, and I try to make copyright claims or I try to go after other channels and YouTube. Oh, well, we can't really do it. You know, yeah, yeah. Like I'm going to trust a bunch of lost, you know, reprobates to, to be fair and things in dealing with my videos. Right. Um, I don't think so. So um, I'm sick and tired of having to censor my speech. I'm sick and tired of having to be wishy-washy. Yes, I am actually being wishy-washy in a lot of my videos on YouTube. Um, I'd like to be a lot more controversial uh, and show a lot more hardcore evidence and things than what we've even done. I mean, the Lord just is constantly showing us new things and uh, some just really groundbreaking type of information that will be coming out in the future. Uh, but again, I can't do it anymore on the internet like this, uh, on just live, or not live streaming, but just, you know, video on YouTube or whatever other platform. It's not working. It's not working. Um, we have no legal recourse to, to be able to persecute, or it's not persecute, prosecute people that are, that are stealing from this ministry, that are, you know, um, whatever. So I'm tired of it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be, uh, eventually when this whole video project thing is done, cataloging and everything else, um, we get our tax number. Again, we have to wait till we get a new ministry office because I don't want to be here in Bridgewater and then we get the new office someplace and I'm printing the DVDs and all the new stuff with the old Bridgewater ministry address, P.O. Box, and then we get a new one and I have to redo everything. No. Um, so this transition is going to take a little bit of time uh, till we get settled into some new ministry office place. Update on that as well. Um, it's really, really weird uh, how the Lord is working things out, and it's very frustrating <laughs> to see. It's just, I'm going, oh, Lord, what are you doing here? There's this woman, Karen Rockwell is her name. She has a real estate you know, agency down in the area where we're at, and uh, she's got, you know, properties that we're interested in and we keep trying to contact through our realtor and uh, is a guy and um, I we keep trying to contact through him to get her to say you know can we you know we'd like him to show us the property that you're listing the listing agent of and she just keeps on fighting and fighting well I can't find the key and I don't know uh, you know not a very good you know, woman in business, she shouldn't be in business, she should be a keeper at home, but that's another issue. So there's two properties right now that she has 
that we're very interested in, that we'd like to go see. We've been trying to see the one for over a month, and she just keeps on fighting and fighting, and, well, I can't get it, and I just, uh, and, and our realtor is getting very frustrated with her and whatever else. So I contact my realtor, and I said, you know, we see this new place. We'd like to, you know, check it out. And he said, yeah, I'll see if I can set something up. Hopefully I can get her to do it here. Writes back the next day, and he says, uh, this isn't going to happen for a while. She's in the hospital. And I'm thinking, hmm, maybe the Lord's bringing judgment upon this woman. I've seen that kind of thing happen before. So uh, just please keep us in your prayers as far as, uh, you know, the new ministry office thing is concerned. Um, we're, you know, money-wise right now, we're, we're busy trying to focus on building on the property. Again, you know, please keep that in mind. Right? I, I don't just do internet stuff and whatever else. You know, I'm not just some guy that sits in front of a computer. I actually go out and work hard, a lot of physical labor and whatever else, uh, mechanic type of stuff, um, building things. Uh, I work very, very, very hard. And so if I'm not always just there every couple of days putting a video out, don't think I'm leaving the ministry or I've quit or something. Uh, you know, and, you know, I've seen a lot of people dropping their pledge amounts, dropping, deleting their accounts, and I'm thinking, because I haven't been around for two weeks, and I'm going, okay. So uh, we do appreciate the support of God's people, and um, you know, but in the future, it's definitely going to be a different type of ministry, um, one that's not going to be censored, um, unless they try to come after us for the DVDs that we're going to be putting out and things in the future. But that's, I mean, I had no idea how long it's going to take for us to make this transition. It's going to be a way out into the future. But uh, just um, please do keep us in your prayers. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.